It's Drewski McGillicuddy's Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, Movie Review. Hey everybody, it's Drewski McGillicuddy, and I just washed my hair and it was looking so good, I figured I'd, you know, let y'all see it uh, instead of wearing a hat. I mean, doesn't it just... Huh? Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, from 1988, directed by not John Carpenter, but, you know, whatever this guy's name was, he Dwight did... Dwight H. Little. Dwight H. Little. He did, he, did, he did a fairly decent job directing this movie. Uh, I love the opening scene. Like, it's not a jack-o'-lantern or anything, uh, but it's very Halloween-y, and it, it, it just feels like October. Uh, it actually feels like this movie was filmed in October and not just in the middle of the summer like uh, the first one. But, you know, that aside, I gotta be honest, uh, growing up, this movie never really, I don't know, it's like, did, did I ever sit down and actually watch it uninterrupted or was it always on TV? I mean, I've owned it for years, but it's like, was I not paying attention to everything? Now, I, I I know most of the movie, but there was some stuff I was just like, you know, I feel like I was never actually focused when I was watching it. But this time, when I watched it, I was focused. I even caught the fuck off Wade part. But anyway, so I love the opening scene, like I said. And then we get introduced to Rachel and Jamie and... The one thing that bothered me about the movie is, you know, they, they referenced that uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, or Laurie Strode and, and her husband, they don't mention who her husband was. They just mentioned that they're dead. They died 11 months ago, and, and now Jamie's living with a foster family. But they don't ever say what happened to her, and I, I think, you know, that would have been nice to know what happened to, like, you know, one of the biggest scream queens in horror history. Uh, instead of just, oh, they passed away. Okay, what happened? Uh, or maybe I, I missed it. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention, but, you know, I, I don't recall them actually talking about it. Anyway, so then Jamie has a bad dream, and it, it, this is one of my favorite dream sequences in a movie, actually, because uh, you don't know it's a dream right away, because... Like, when I was watching it, like, it had been so long since I watched it, I was like, how the hell does he have his mask already? And I was like, oh, it's probably a dream, duh. Uh, but yeah, this mask it, it isn't as bad as everybody makes it out to be, but it's still pretty bad. Uh, the one good thing uh, that they did was not show Michael's eyes. Uh, I hate when they show Michael's eyes. Uh, you'll learn that uh, with it coming up there's a movie where they show his eyes way way too much and this one almost like they either he was still wearing his bandages and that's why you didn't see his eyes or it's like he had an invisible mask on because there's a scene where you can see where it, it, it should show his eyes but it's just black but anyway that's just i just don't understand i also don't understand like he goes to get this mask from the drugstore when Jamie goes to find her costume and, and Rachel talks to Brady and uh, which this scene's pretty cool too but it's like why would they have that mask because granted it's 10 years later why would you be selling a Michael Myers mask uh, about a guy a mask of a guy that killed 16 people in your own town it doesn't make any sense to me but that's just a small nitpick you know now the mask itself I guess they went a little overboard on the paint, but it's like, this is like a $3 mask, okay? And I'm sure this movie had, a, a, you know, a pretty decent budget. So you're telling me they couldn't, like, look at the fucking poster. Am I still, do I still have it up? I'm going to bring the poster back up. Look at the fucking poster. I mean, that's the mask from the original movie. Uh, how did they get this image to make this poster? Uh, how could they not just go make another Captain Kirk. I mean, this is this is supposedly a Captain Kirk mask. Um, nobody saw this and thought, wait a minute, maybe we should, you know, 
repaint it, you know, do something. I don't know. It just bothers me that other than that, the Michael Meyer, George P. Wilbur does a great job. Now, there's some scenes where he's a little stiff for my, uh, you know, in my opinion, but overall I, he's a lot better than the, the guy that played him in uh, part two. Anyway, aside from that, aside from the mask, I really enjoyed this movie this time. I really did. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Rachel, uh, but Jamie Lloyd, like, her character, I mean, she's one of the, obviously one of the best characters in the franchise, but just Danielle Harris's performance, it's like she was such a great actress when she was a little kid. And then, I don't know if you've seen some of her later stuff, even after Rob Zombie's Halloween, like just some of the B-movies she's in, it's like maybe she just didn't care about that role, but she's never been as good as she was in Halloween 4, like especially the uh, Hatchet movies. But we're not here to talk about that. We're just talking about Jamie, she, or Danielle Harris, gives a wonderful child performance. Like she's believable, her emotions, like when the kids are bullying her, that that scene just almost you know makes you cry. You know, it's it's sad. It's a real sad scene because it's like, are there really kids out there that would fucking pick on a kid and make fun of the fact that her mom's dead? Like that's fucking bullshit. If I would have been there, I'd have snatched these little bastards up, and you know probably got arrested. Anyway, uh, speaking of the bullies, uh, when Jamie is trick or treating. That little kid that's got the Frankenstein costume, he was the one that started bullying her. Well, I don't know if nobody noticed that that's the same kid that goes, oh, I like your costume. Do you want to trick or treat with us? And then they were like, oh, no, you're a little fucking bastard. Fuck you. You know, making fun of my mom being dead. How, why, 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 why would I want to fucking trick or treat with you, you little piece of shit? But that's just another uh, th little, little small little small thing I noticed. But other than that, this movie is full of that Halloween atmosphere that I'm looking for. Uh, most of the characters, you know, are likable enough. I mean, Brady, he's a piece of shit. Uh, fuck him. Uh, I did, I, I like him in Days of Confuse, but it, he's a fucking dick in this movie. Uh, I just, it bothers me. Like, oh, uh, you, you, you canceled our date, so I'm just gonna go Bang the next best, yeah, that, and then he tries to fucking talk his way out of it. Like, no, fuck you, dude. You blew it. You fucking blew it. Uh, even though, <laughs> honestly, what was that other girl's name? Who cares? The sheriff's daughter. I would have much. Her name was Hoor. I would have much rather, you know, got with her than Rachel. Rachel's just, you know, she, she, I don't know. She doesn't do it for me. Uh, maybe it's the hair. I don't know. What were we talking about? Because, yeah, speaking of uh, the sheriff's daughter, how are you not going to let us see them titties? Huh? Well, I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, the movie's fucking rated R. I mean, I highly doubt that this chick has a no nudity clause. So what the fuck is the deal? What is your excuse for not letting us see these bountiful bosoms? Huh? Fucking piss me off. That's another, uh, I'm taking a point off for that alone. But, uh, yeah, Donald, let's talk about Donald Pleasance. Uh, I, I, I like Donald Pleasance better in this one than I even did in the second one. I, I, I mean, I loved him in the first one. I liked him in the second one. I loved him again in this one. Uh, just that whole gas station scene is fucking badass. The whole fucking thing. But, you know, what I don't get is how... I mean, I know Michael's supposed to be a genius or something in this movie, but when he runs over to gas pumps, it's like... Did he know that that was going to blow up Loomis's car too and crawl up the fucking telephone pole and take out the telephone lines too so that nobody could call in or out for help? I mean, shit, that's like one of them Rube Goldberg machines or whatever. Anyway, so, yeah, Donald Pleasance is a badass in this movie. I just love the scene where he's like, damn you, and he just starts, you know popping caps, even though Michael had already dipped out by then. But yeah. And then the scene where he's walking 
Uh, it's like, who wouldn't pick up a fucking old man stranded on the side of the road? Like, that first station wagon just drives by, and you got these little fucking asshole high school kids that drive up, like, come on, old man, come on, and they fucking blow dust in his face. You pieces of shit. But then that's fine, that's fine. The Reverend comes along, and this character is probably my favorite, like, side character in any of the Halloween movies. Uh, probably my favorite scene in the movie, just his conversation with Dr. Loomis about, you know, he's been hunting Damnation and Armageddon for 30 years, and he could tell, you know, while he was standing there in the dust, he could tell, he's like, I could tell you were hunting the same thing. Uh, I don't know, it's just the whole thing. And the actor that plays the Reverend, he's in, like, so many random-ass movies. It's crazy. Uh, but, yes, I love, love this scene. So then we finally get to Hattonfield, and, you know, Sheriff Brackett had done moved down to Florida. And, you know, he's retired. And I, I do like the new sheriff. I think the new sheriff's cool. I mean, he, he kind of hesitates to listen to uh, Dr. Loomis at first. But then, you know, once he has his deputy call and try to check it out and the phone lines are down, it's like, well, tch, how the phone lines get down, motherfucker? Uh, so they are quick to react. Now, the scene where... They see Michael Myers, and he's like, is that him? He's like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's like five of them standing around. Uh, the first kid, I, I don't know, I, I probably can't find the image. I should probably play the video, but I ain't got that kind of time. I gotta get the haunted house. I just want to get this out. I just want you to hear my thoughts on the movie. Maybe later on, when I go deeper into my Halloween Revisited, and I have a lot, I, you know, I don't have to explain myself. Anyway, one of the guys wearing one of these fucking masks, uh, the mask actually looked a hell of a lot better than the actual mask they used. So you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, why the fuck didn't they use that mask? Or maybe it was just the lighting, I don't know. But the, the one kid, he's standing over by the bush, and it's got longer hair or whatever. It just, it's scary looking. Uh, and I think they should have used that mask. Or like I said, just, you know, went and got another mask and tried, you know, to paint it better. But I, I, I don't want to keep griping on the mask. But, uh... Yeah, the kills in this movie. Let's talk about the kills. Uh, there's some brutal kills in this movie. Uh, one in particular... It's like, you know... You gotta wonder... You know, he, Michael Myers doesn't use, use guns. Or does he? Because he straight up stabs this bitch... With a shotgun. Uh, I mean... That's a good way to save on bullets, I guess... But, uh, and it's kind of, a, I don't know. It's like, why why even use the gun if you're just going to stab her with it? But it's still, it's still a cool scene. Uh, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, and it's just the fact that, you know, they get locked into this giant-ass house. And this is a giant-ass house. I don't know how uh, a sheriff, you know, on a, on a you know, just a, a little small, little small-town sheriff salary can afford this fucking mansion. Uh, but, you know. I would love to live in this house, except I don't know if I'd like walking up and down them stairs. Like, it took them forever to get up these steps. And then Brady uh, gets what he deserves. He's like, this is what happens when you be fucking around on them bitches. Michael Myers gonna come kill you. Uh, so then... Loomis accidentally starts a lynch mob, but it's okay, because, you know, Michael Myers done went and killed the entire police force. Uh, but these guys that are on the lynch mob, they're kind of a bunch of jackasses. Uh, they're trigger-happy jackasses. They kill, uh, what what was the guy's name? Tom Jones or something? Uh, some guy taking a piss in the bush. And you know, he's like, oh, it's Michael Myers. And then, you know, they unload, like, 30 rounds into him. And then find out it wasn't even Michael Myers. It's like, uh, maybe you could have said, hey, come out from behind that bush. And then he would have been like, hey, I'm taking a fucking piss, asshole. You know, you don't have to just... And plus, you were like 100 yards away. And Michael Myers stabs people. So you would have had ample opportunity to shoot the motherfucker. You didn't have to just start firing blindly into the dark. It's dangerous. That's how people get hurt. Uh, people did get hurt. They got killed. But anyway, so the whole chase scene in the house, you know, it's very intense. I liked it. I liked it a lot. And then you got... You know, they go to the school, which uh, Rachel never got in with Loomis. So how the hell does she know that they went to the school? Because she comes out of nowhere 
and sprays Michael with the fire extinguisher. Uh, I was like, how the hell is she? I mean, I guess maybe she could hear the alarm going off from like uh, two or three miles away. However, however far away they were, I don't know. But uh, then the, the lynch mob comes and finds them. And you got to wonder, uh, they pulled up. They were all standing there. When the hell did Michael have time to get underneath the truck? And how did he hold on for however many miles with the butcher knife? Like, yeah, can, can you I, I, I get it. He's not human. He's not human. But even a not human person would have a hard time. Did he? I mean, he's wearing a mask so he can't hold the knife in his teeth. Where did he have that knife while he was holding on? Because then all of a sudden he's climbing over and he's already got it in his hand. I don't know. It's a little far-fetched. But it's still fucking badass. And he just fucking comes up over the tailgate at these motherfuckers and throws them off the truck. And the one guy's like, it's awfully quiet back there. And then he gets his neck ripped out. Like, it's fucking gruesome. So then, you know, Rachel has to push his body out, which is disrespectful to a corpse. But, you know, she had she had no choice. She had to drive the truck. And you got Michael just uh, hanging on for dear life, even though he's not a man, so he doesn't have to worry about dying. Because after that, we get one of the craziest finales in the Halloween franchise. Uh, they unload all... All the bullets in the town in the Michael Myers, and he falls down a mine shaft. And you know that's pretty, pretty good ending. You know, you gotta wonder how somebody could come back from that. Uh, but he's not a man. He's not a man. Uh, anyway, so then we get to the the actual ending, ending where you know little Jamie Lloyd grabs a pair of scissors and goes and uh, seriously injures her uh, foster mother. Because uh, apparently, you know, pretty sure she was dead. But apparently there's another movie. Uh, and they done undid most of the stuff that happened in this movie. They even somehow managed to make the mask even worse. But we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, but yeah, this is still a pretty cool ending. Donald Pleasant's reaction to Jamie standing at the top of the steps with the scissors. I love it. I do. I really love it. Uh, so yeah, this movie was a lot better for me this time. So uh, I feel very confident putting a number on it, even though I should come up with some way more creative. Uh, I could freeze myself and then do the little thing Cody Leach does, but I don't want to copy off of, off of nobody. I'm trying to be creative. I'm trying to be real creative. But you know, I, I I didn't get home till five o'clock in the morning. I've been at the dental schoolhouse scaring people all night, and it was a terrible night. It was terrible. So many fucking drunk people. Oh yeah, we're rating this movie. I'm giving it a seven point five. Okay, I had to take off a couple points for the mask, and there's some other things about the movie uh, that, that kind of aggravate me. But other than that, it's a super solid entry, and it's probably pretty high up there on my ranking. But you know, you have to stay tuned. To find out where this movie ranks amongst the other ones. Uh, anyway, before you like, share, and subscribe, I wanted to show you this. Uh, I forgot to bring this home the other day. Um, I've been bugging the owners of the haunted house for one of these ever since they got them. Uh, a couple years ago, we had oh, <laughs> I had to drop a Friday the Thirteenth uh, thing in a Halloween review, but we had a Friday the Thirteenth night. We even had Jason come up and chase people with an axe out front. Uh, but yeah, it was Friday the 13th, so they had these fancy little hockey masks made, and I finally got one for my birthday. So thanks, bud. I really appreciate that. Um, warning, this is not a protective mask, so I won't wear this when I'm playing street hockey. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this wasn't a complete fucking mess. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll see you next time with Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. I'm looking forward to it.